So everything is starting to wake up. The long atmospheric rivers seem to have ended and uh, it's springtime. So plants that are deciduous seem to be coming out of their deciduousness and they are waking up. Look at this beautiful Tillandsia. Can't remember what species it is. And this Kalanchoe. Beautiful little flower there, isn't that cute? I got that from John Black, who's 90 years old now. Local legend. Local legend. We're going to have a party for him in another week or so. Look at this beautiful flower. Right? There. Look at that. Puya violacea or Puya cerulea violacea. And it blooms, well, it blooms every spring and it's beautiful flowers. And look at the one under the mule there. The mule is still wearing a wreath from the wedding that we had here a couple weeks ago. There was a guy over on the west side, a cactus and succulent grower, and I went to see his garden and it was fantastic. He had cactus and succulents and in the middle of all was this mule. The next day I went back to look again at his garden because it was late in the day. And I told him how much I admired it and he came here and looked at my garden and loved this Alorama system, so we traded. Good deal. So they put that in the back of their pickup truck and brought it over here. And I'm really happy with the trade. I hope his Alorama system is still doing well. Dione planifolium is one of my popular sellers these days. It's a fantastic Mexican cycad. It's one of the fastest growing of all cycads. And not only do you get the principal plant, but you get all these offsets. Dione planifolium. We called it that because the leaves are dead flat. There are a number of dions that we have described, new to science, and this is one of them. And uh, through the years, through the last 30 years, we have described, I think, about 10 species of Mexican cycads, mostly in the genera Dion and Ceratozamia. And when you say we, who's on the team there? Uh, Sylvia Salas Morales, Mexican botanist, and Tim Gregory, and myself. Oh, and then recently we've been collaborating with Miguel Angel Perez Ferreira, uh, who's the preeminent Mexican cycad biologist. I was just down in the field with him looking at some new species that I wish I could tell you about. They're fantastic, but we'll have to save that for another day. Anyway, over here is Hectia argentea from central Mexico. It's f this is full flower right now. It's a female. You can tell that because you see the three-parted stigma at the top of the ovary, which you probably don't really see, but there it is. And every April, this thing blooms, comes out with about a dozen or so um, inflorescences. And it's a fantastic plant, but like all good hectias, it's dioecious, meaning separate sexes, male and female. I didn't have a male for her. I crossed it with this, which is Hectia lanata from Oaxaca. The resultant F1 hybrid is this thing that I called silver tongue devil. And in keeping with the norm, often when you make a hybrid, it more closely resembles the female component than the male. The uh, silver tongue devil looks a lot like mom. It's been very popular. And they just get bigger and whiter, and uh, they're all over in the garden. Argent means silver, as in Argentina. And then this is Hectia argentea, which is silvery. And it's not really silvery. The leaves of all, all these plants that are glaucous, that are blue, or co they're covered with scales or trichomes, which generally are thought to prevent desiccation, uh, to keep the plant from drying out in hostile environments. There's a mockingbird in the uh, Allo rupestris. That's usually one of the last ones to bloom during the year. Clearly there's a little bit of nectar left and that mockingbird is enjoying it. You know, we had a, uh, a wedding here, as I mentioned, two weeks ago, and I was the officiant. And in the middle of the ceremony, I heard the telltale rattle of a hooded oriole. It was the first one of the year, and here he comes, there he is, there he goes, oh my God, hooded oriole. And he came in and he started to feed right on this, um, Aloe, everybody loved it because half the people in the crowd were birders. Here, let's see if we can call him in. I, I do this sometimes. 
Now you know what they do in nature shows. Well, the beauty of plant watching instead of bird watching is the plants are right there and you can look at them. The birds don't always cooperate. That encephalardus uh, Eugene Maracea is about to cough wad, meaning it's about to push out something in a big way. Either leaves or cone, I can't tell at this point. It's a female and it takes a lot of energy to pump out a cone. Frankly, I, I'm hoping it just puts out new leaves. And then this is Saba rubriflora. We've talked about it before. Um, lesser goldfinch up there and a house finch. Should be leafing out any day now. Oh, you can really see the... So this is Dion argenteum, meaning silver colored Dion. And it stands out in a crowd, doesn't it? This is another of the Mexican cycad species we described. And I chose the name Argenteum because I wanted to commemorate the silver appearance of the leaves. And this was growing near a church in the Sierra Norte of Oaxaca. And they had the plants up at the church because they used the leaves for commemorative purposes. They used them during Semana Santa, Easter week. They used them during other celebrations, weddings, bar mitzvahs, parties. Probably not too many bar mitzvahs, but... Yeah, and uh, the plant, rather, the actual population is way down in the canyon below, but it's a long schlep to go down there to get the leaves. We had the plants growing there to have them at, at, at close, uh, close supply. Beautiful, huh? Yeah, you can see the uh, aloe heleni way off in the distance. Yeah, right here. here's another one right here, Al. Plants will tell you a lot of information if you let them. Notice the new flowers here are all facing south. When they, the inflorescence starts to open up a bit and the stamens exert, they always go to the south first. That's where the sun and the warmth is. And then I notice over here, if you look way back there, is a Cleistocactus straussii. See that white furry cactus with the red flowers? See, they're all pointing south. Well, except for that one guy looking east, but there's always one in every crowd. This is a plant I've had for years. This is agave gingola from Oaxaca. And it was a giant, and now it, as it's begun to flower, started to shrink. And let's see the flower come here. Once again, look what side the flowers are on. South side. That's a spicy meatball. We're gonna wrap up this, today's uh, video, but I did wanna comment about the weather we've had, the rain we've had this year. It's been an incredible year. We've had 46 inches of rain since last August, which is about three times the average and tremendous amount of rain fell during cold periods. And I was concerned what kind of toll it would take on these plants, many of which do not come from areas of winter rainfall. And having all that rain is wonderful up to a point, and then there's too much, and then things begin to suffer. And a number of my aloes did this, where they just got too wet and too cold, and the crown starts to, well, it starts to rot. But happily, I noticed there's new growth behind it, so they will be all right. They'll live through it, but if any of you are growing aloes and finding that the crowns are rotting, just be a little patient um, and be glad we got that much rain. Oh, big news. Rarely in my garden does somebody that comes to visit see something I haven't seen. I think everybody's garden is like that where by the time somebody says something, you've been all over it for, for days or weeks. Like when there's a big cycad cone and someone will say, hey Jeff, did you see this cone? Yes, of course I saw that cone. But the other day someone said, hey, look at that flower. And I had not seen that my yucca Thompsoniana is flowering for the first time. They're actually edible, the flowers. You can put them in scrambled eggs. I don't intend to do that. That's a lot of work to get to, to get scrambled egg enhancement. All right, thank you for watching. Stay tuned for upcoming exciting episodes. Please come and see us. Be sure to book a tour in advance. 
Don't forget we have merch. And uh, what else? There's always a good season. The aloes may be done, but the cactus are starting to bloom and the side cats are starting to leaf out. Oh, and look at that, forgot to show you this. 